You would think that because I talk a lot, maybe you assume that I'm a good speaker. Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Out of um, all of my siblings, I was the only one that wasn't valedictorian in high school. So that's a little bit hard to live up to sometimes. But the other thing that I was thinking of when I was sitting here, I'm like, every time that I give my talks to my core strength kids, the lights are usually off. <laughs> so it's also easier to just talk when nobody can see what I look like, because I probably look like this all the time, but it's dark out, so they don't see me. <laughs> anyway, um, like we all have tendencies to make assumptions, and sometimes with those assumptions, um, the problem is, is that we believe them to be true. And the more that we assume things, and that we believe things to be true, um, it can kind of get us into trouble. And we get in a little bit of trouble because maybe we are too fearful to ask for clarification. And so we might have misunderstandings, and you might know my name, but maybe you don't know my story. Um, so I come from this family of really, really intelligent, um, super smart, super artistic, really, really musical brothers and sisters. They were gifted. Um, I'm the only one in my family that was adopted. And so from a very young age, I was assumed to be really smart and really talented musically and artistically and everything. And I just never felt like I lived up to that. And so when I was at school, at this elementary school, which was a Catholic school, and we wore these really pretty uniforms every day, um, I remember the teachers assuming that I could do everything that my brother did. My brother was so smart. And I remember them, teachers saying to me, well, you should be able to sit still and you should be able to listen to what everybody else in your family does. And um, I couldn't, it was just different. And so um, those assumptions really hit hard. And sometimes it's really painful to like listen to that as you're going through life. Um, to take a lighter note of it, you know, sometimes now as an adult, people assume things about me as well. So I never wear my wedding ring. And so I've had people assume that I'm not married or I'm getting divorced or something. And people just have never asked me the question, like, why don't you wear your wedding ring? Well, I don't wear my wedding ring because the diamond is always really, really loose. And it was a very expensive ring and I cherish it. And so I don't wear it because I don't want to lose it. Because I have three friends that have lost diamonds out on football fields. And so I wish one day that I could find one. <laughs> or that something else is going on because I don't wear my wedding ring. Or some people assume, and people have said this to me, well, Mrs. Godfrey, make this look really easy because you're such a good athlete. If you only knew that I'm afraid of softballs, <laughs> don't want to be on your basketball team, and that I actually had a mother come down to me while I was playing high school volleyball, out of the stands at the end of a game that we lost, and into my face. You are the worst athlete I've ever seen. You should not be on this court and yelling at my coach. You should not be playing at her. And in front of like everybody and blamed the entire volleyball game loss on me. Well, my coach played me because I was a really hard worker and um, maybe I wasn't the greatest volleyball player. Um, and I'm not a good athlete. Believe me, I have like 500 variations of tag for every single holiday and every event that's ever there. And when I got moved up to the high school, um, I was extremely nervous, extremely nervous. So I'm not really a good athlete. However, I was a really, really good runner. And I think sometimes I took that running um, and I ran from my fears and I ran from the people assumed, that were assuming that I could do all these wonderful, great things that my siblings could do that I just couldn't do. My mind isn't wired that way. I come from a different place. My sisters are all like, six feet tall, they weigh about 100 pounds, these tall, skinny, skinny people, and then there's me. You know, it's, it, I don't fit in. So it always made it hard for me when people assume things about me, and even as an adult, people still assume things about me and tell stories about me, but they've never really asked me the questions. And so when I, when I think of the things that I've gone through in my life, and then teaching with, um, students, especially just the people in my core strength class, because it just seems to be like a group of people I can talk to. I want to try and share some ideas or thoughts so that maybe they don't have to go through the things that I went through that were so painful. 
And maybe I just like to share those ideas because it's kind of makes me feel a little bit better. Um, so I did this little project with the kids in my class where they would have somebody that they didn't know and they would have to just look at them for about 30 seconds. And then after 30 seconds, which was really awkward because we were just kind of staring at each other, they would sit back to back <laughs> with each other. And I just threw out some random questions. Like, what do you think um, your partner's favorite genre of music is? And the kids are all like, what? I don't know, I didn't get to talk to them. I'm like, so just write something down. What do you think it would be? Or what kind of cereal do you think they would like to eat in the morning? And that was, they were like, I have no idea. And so after a couple of these questions, then they turned around and they shared their answers with each other. And then we talked a little bit about like, well, how did you come up with your answers? And they said, well, I had to guess or I had to assume what they would look, like what they would like. And I said, well, how did you come up with those assumptions? Well, maybe by what they were wearing or maybe, you know, I've seen them in school or something. And I said, so you pretty much had to guess or assume what they would like. So we talked a little bit about that, and then I said to them, well, don't we do that in life? Like, you walk into the cafeteria and you see somebody, maybe half their head is shaved. Do you just assume that they're a freak? Do you assume that the girl that's sitting alone eating every single day for four years in this high school, I've never seen anybody sit with her. Well, once I did. <laughs> but she sits there by herself every day. So am I assuming that she wants to sit there by herself? Am I assuming that she likes to be sitting there with her headphones on and she doesn't want to be bothered. Well, if you sit down and have a conversation with her, she always just says, well, nobody wants to sit with me. And so, you know, if we can redirect our energy and redirect our thoughts, we can make a critical impact on the transformation of this community that we have at Homestead. Instead of being so quick to assume things about people, because believe me, I hear things all the time. I, I hear people talking in the locker rooms, and if every single time I believe what I heard, well, I heard she did this, and I heard she did that, I don't, I don't want to do that. Because maybe I've also seen another side of them. So I want to redirect our energy to make this critical impact, to say, you know what, just suspend your judgment with a little bit of wonder, and maybe have the courage to ask the question, I wonder why Mrs. Godfrey looks so tired this morning. I wonder why she never wears makeup. It's because it takes so long to take off. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> it's true. And I'm too cheap to buy it. <laughs> but I want to make a conscious effort and I, I just want people to think, like, instead of like judging people and assuming things about people and labeling them and, and thinking that they are something that maybe they're not, if we can have the courage to ask a question, and sometimes we might not want to ask the question because it wouldn't be our place, but then just take a step back and I just wonder. I just wonder. Because if we can have a better understanding, instead of having sympathy and feeling bad for somebody, we have a better sense of empathy. And when we have empathy for somebody, it's because we have a better understanding. And it might be hard for you right now because you're young and you haven't lived all these life experiences and stuff, but as you get older, you start realizing, I can empathize with a girl that has an eating disorder. I can empathize with somebody who maybe didn't come from the best home life because you got hit at home. I can empathize with somebody who has been marked as not a good person. Because as you go through life, sometimes you have that label, but it doesn't mean that you're gonna have that label forever. And it might be the wrong label because somebody just made it up because that's what they thought about you. So, as we go forth from today with these assumptions, please don't assume that I don't, I had like a bad life and I had bad things happen to me because I've had many good things. But the things that I have learned has made me who I am today. And that's just kind of my story. I do want to say thank you for having me come. They asked me last year too and I think I was a little too scared and we were out of town. But the reason that this really is valuable